Well, hello, welcome to Walking in the Supernatural with Pastor Evelyn Mosley Brooks. We have a new guest today, William. Hello. Um, Edward Henley II. I have to look down because I forget his middle name. I should know it. It's the same name as my brother's, Tyrone Edward. But anyway, William is here today. We've called him because, first off, I know William. Met him in 2015. And he is another that have many, 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 many supernatural experiences. One that being, God told him to write his new book, which I'm so excited for you, William, The New Light on Old Truths. Yes. It took William a while to write this book. I know all the challenges, the challenges that he endured, but that's the key word. He endured and he also persevered. So we have questions today. Um, yes, go ahead. That William, I'll be asking William. Uh, William, just want to tell a little bit about yourself within like in a minute so we can answer all of the questions. I grew up in the church. Uh, I was saved when I was about eight years old. Um, most people were overjoyed when they were saved. I was angry because for about three years, I, I was sitting here thinking I was going to hell because no, Jesus isn't knocking at the door to my heart. Nobody told me how to be saved until I was saved for myself. And when I found out how simple it was, I'm like, how come nobody told me earlier? Um, I accepted the call to ministry when I was 17. It wasn't until I was 32 that God revealed to me what that call was. And um, so what we're here for is to promote William and his new book. What William new book is, he has it on the back of his cover. There has been much in church theology over the years that has come about as looking at the Bible as a great literary book. But if we, we look at the Bible as a historical book, how do things change? The question, and then the answer. And even if our theology is correct, are the, another question, are the actions of Christians in the church engaging correct? Inside William's new book, we will discover many instances where what many Christians believe do not match up with the Bible. William also shares part of his amazing testimony inside about coming from a sensationist background to encountering God through the gifts of the Spirit. So now, I know sensationist uh, sounds like a big word to many. So let's explain real quick what yes, sensationist that means. that's going to be my question. Um, at the, uh, uh, many people believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased to exist, cease sensationism, ceased to exist, after the last apostle, who would have been John Guy. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I mean, if you're watching this show, um, I mean, you're definitely aware that no, the Holy Spirit still works and stuff, but there's still a lot of Christians out there based on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when it says uh, things such as speaking in tongues and speaking in prophecy will cease to exist. Most people just sit here and think, okay, well, that means that they no longer exist. But it does say in the day of fulfillment, which is when Christ is going to return. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions, William, for the audience so they will understand better about your book. And so let's get started. Okay. All right. So first question is, how did you come to write this book and what was your motivation? Well, uh, of course, motivation was God. <laughs> um, but how I came to write it is I've been writing well, most of my life, I, I love to write. Um, I started writing uh, like blogs and stuff probably about 10 years ago. I entered the seminary, started writing research papers and stuff. And to me, um, uh, a research paper, I got to write it. Someone has to read it. Let's make it interesting. So yeah, I'll quote all my sources and stuff, but you know what? A lay person should be able to read it and know what I'm talking about. Well, people started telling me, you need to publish this, you need to publish this. And I'm like, I'm not publishing, you know, like a 15, 20 page book. Uh, or a leaflet is what I'll call it. And um, about uh, four years ago, God spoke to me and he said, take all your material and combine it. You have enough material there for a book. And of course, it was all disjointed at that time. But I started writing more stuff and started uh, fitting it together. And probably about 50% of the book was written before 2018. The rest was written after. And as I started combining it, I started seeing a theme running throughout the book, which is John 3.17. Most people know John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible, which says, For God 
so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How many people know the very next verse? And it says, for God did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. And we see right now so many people in the church uh, will just condemn people that we're called to be reaching out to. Um, like the um, LGBT community, you know, a person will go on America's Got Talent and they'll come out of the closet. They get a standing ovation. They go into the church and say they're gay and they're cast out like, you know, they're a demon or something. Well, what do you think is going to happen to this person? Well, obviously they're going to go to the world because the world loves them and the church hates them. Um, what about someone who's had an abortion? Uh, I mean, the church is out there protesting in front of the abortion clinics. Yeah, you know what? You you may have in your heart, you know, trying to save the unborn children, but what's happening to the soul of that person who's inside who sees you out there protesting? Right. Well, um, that's a really good point. Yeah. I didn't even think about that with um, um, John 3.17. But do you remember when I prophesied to you that you was going to write a book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, yes. the second <laughs> yes, he was like, no, I'm like, well, William, I'm just telling you what God told me to tell you, and he said it at first. He says, I said, why? What made you write the book? And he said, God. Anyway, but question number two, who does the book appeal to, and why? So I am. I, I expect you to have a fundamental understanding of Christianity, um, and I. I'm really appealing to those people who want to know more, who want to go deeper, who aren't quite ready to pick up a theology book. It seems like you have two types of books. You have the books that's written, you know, your nice devotionals, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with devotionals. I read devotionals. I read Max Lucado. You know, these are great books. I read Joe Lowstein. Um, I read uh, Joyce Meyer or Beth Moore. And then on the other end, you have these theology books by people like Eusebius Pamphilius, and um, you know, um, if you know who Eusebius Pamphilius is, I actually just bought one of his books, I love it, but um, most people aren't going to pick this up. Um, Alistair Metcalfe, The Introduction to Christian uh, Theology, great book, most people are not going to pick it up. Um, I'm hitting that middle ground, the people who want to um, know more that are not ready to go the academic route, not ready to go to seminary, stuff like that. And for years, I was this person. I wanted more meat, but I couldn't digest a theology book. Mm, this is a good point, because William and I are both in seminary school, and he is correct, trying to digest a theology book. You know, everyone's theology is different. He has his form of theology, I have my form of theology. Um, and then there's the scholarly, scholarly um, theology, and they go more in depth. Um, so anyway, number question number three, William, what one thing do you want readers to learn and take away from this work? I think the one thing I want readers to learn is, uh, going back to John 3, 17, God did not come to the world to condemn it, but to save it. Um, and I mean, there's... I got books in here about infighting between Christians and stuff. I actually had a pastor friend who, um, well, social media was just sitting here just telling downright lies about Lakewood Church and Joe Osi. Um, and it was when the hurricane hit. And um, there, there was this guy sitting here like, well, Joe Osteen's church wouldn't uh, even open his doors to me. And they went up from them knocking on the doors to the church. The thing is, is I've been to Lakewood Church, and I can tell you right now, he was not standing outside of Lakewood Church. Mm. Um, because, I mean, there was cars in the parking lot. Lakewood Church is in the middle of the downtown area. They don't have a parking lot. They have a parking garage. Oh. Um, and, but I sit here and uh, uh, pull that out, and I had a friend who was a pastor who said, well, what difference does it make? Uh, Joe Osteen needs to be taken down. And I'm like, you know what? You may not agree with uh, his prosperity gospel, but he preaches the plan of salvation at the end of every single message. He baptized people. Uh, you go to a church, he is down there with the altar ministry praying with people. He is authentic. He cares about people. So you don't agree with this prosperity gospel. Big deal. He's led thousands of people to Christ. As you say in John 3, 17, the word of God, God did not come to the world to condemn the world, but to save it. That's Hallelujah. Right. So question number four, William, what scenes and or characters, characters would you like to highlight during the interview? So 
I talk about, um, and this is in the very last chapter of the book, uh, I talk about God creating the world. And um, I talk about how this just consciousness was just floating around in this void. With Genesis 1-1, the earth was uh, formless and void. God was, this consciousness just floating around in this void. And over an infinite amount of time, as you know, he, he just starts thinking and stuff, he suddenly comes up to this idea that I am alone. And so, you know, he sits here and he starts bringing together, like, um, creates electrons and neutrons, and suddenly, boom, hydrogen happens. So it's bringing together more and more of these atoms, and they ignite, and suddenly you have a star, uh, and suddenly you have light. Uh, uh, God created a uh, light, you know, uh, and, and it was the first day, you know, God created light. Um, and then, you know, he starts bringing together more and more stuff. And then he starts forming the earth. He starts forming plants and animals and stuff. But they're not things that he can communicate with. Mm. So suddenly God takes the yeah, earth of the yeah. ground, shapes it into the same form that he himself has, and then breathes his ruach, his spirit, his breath uh, into this man. Uh, into this body, and suddenly you have a living soul, a living being, who is able to communicate with God. And for a while, it is very good. It is very good. It, because God creating light was good. God creating man was very good. It, it says so in the gospel. But then, the worst thing imaginable happens, and man rejects God. Mm -hmm. Man rejects God. All of the elements that he mentioned supernatural no man can wrap their mind around it that was good William. Mm -hmm. so question number five how would you introduce your book to a friend in a sentence or two so it actually kind of changed how i introduced the book now um i will now say it's a theology book for the lay person um and at its heart I mean, you say it's a theology book for the lay yeah. person meaning well let me just uh give you like some ideas uh so uh, we got uh, thoughts on prayer and the holy spirit and cessationism this is a theological statement we're making a theological statement about prayer we're making a theological statement about the holy spirit we're making um uh, uh once again uh, my thoughts on the end time this is a theological topic but my, my thoughts on the end time, I did not use the scholarly word for that. Um, and it is meant for, you know, the normal uh, person reading a book. For example, theological, oh, theological statement, he meaning like serotology, which is like redemption. Mm -hmm. But he's, it's for those that anyone that can read the book, this is a matter what grade level that you are at, you can read. It's an easy read, but it's also a challenge for you to dive deeper to find out who is this Jesus, yes. right? And as you're reading this, to back up these statements, I give personal testimony. I give stories, uh, illustrations. I go into the Bible to look into these ideas. And um, so... Yeah, as much as it's a theology book, it's also a testimony. Amen. So it sounds like he has like a three-part. He brings the introduction of why he's writing this chapter. Then he comes with the theological, which is the biblical um, scriptures. And then he has a testimony. He brings it more exposit expository mm -hmm. way. So any person that reads it can connect. Mm -hmm. Real life, practical Examples. For example, I talk about uh, my um, healing testimony. Well, this is a theological statement saying that God still heals. Yes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And did God was, did God heal in the past? Oh, yes, absolutely. We have words of it in the uh, scripture. So he still uh, heals today. And uh, just uh, a little bit of my uh, own healing testimony. You know, this is a supernatural experience. I grew up in a church that taught that, you know, God no longer works in these ways. Um, and I set foot in that gateway. I started going there because I needed the church that had Saturday services. If I'd known they talked about hope, the Holy Spirit and stuff, I never would have set foot in that church because, you know, I had bad experience with that. Um, and I I didn't, coming from a Baptist background. Yeah, I came from a Baptist background and stuff. And um, my, uh, idea, my, my idea is Holy Spirit speakers is people saying, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. And that was my encounter with people who talked about the Holy Spirit. 
So um, I didn't want anything to do with them. So I walked into this church, and I'd been going there for about six months, and um, heard Pastor Robert's great expository teachings and stuff. I walked into a faith healing service one night, not having no clue what I was walking into. And um, uh, I had been suffering with a muscular condition for nine years. Imagine going to the gym, having this intense workout, and the next day you're so sore you can't even move. Everything is hurting and stuff. Now imagine never recovering from that. And that's pretty much what it was like. I, I literally, this literally happened. I went to the gym and I just thought, oh, I just had an intense workout and I never recovered mm -hmm. for nine years. I went to doctor after doctor after doctor. They couldn't tell me what was wrong. There was things I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I mean, it was crippling. Um, I, lost, I lost a job because of this. Wow. Uh, and uh, so um, I... Uh, suddenly, they, uh, I was at the state healing service, and they specifically asked for people with this condition to stand up. And um, I said, uh, this is ridiculous. I don't know if I believe in this stuff. Uh, because, you know, this is my bad background coming out. And then I look around, and I'm like, I'm at a mega church, and nobody here knows who I am. And other people were standing up. And I said, and the worst thing that's going to happen is nothing. What do I have to lose? So I stood up, and at that moment, God healed me. Immediately, I was healed. I've been suffering with this every single day for nine years. It's been 10 years since that day. I haven't suffered with it for a day since. Wow, and that's what we do. We walk in the supernatural because by Jesus' stripes, William was healed. Not by man, but supernaturally by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tell me how this book is unlike others with similar topics and what sets it apart from the crowd. Once again, I haven't seen too many books uh, focusing that middle audience. You know, the uh, people who want something deeper but are not ready to go for the theology books and stuff yet. And so I am aiming for that crowd. And I remember for years that was me because it's like, I wanted more. I wanted more. And it's just like, I just wasn't finding anything. And I was almost in desperation. And I Lord, there's obviously can't be, I obviously can't know everything there is to know about you. I want more. And so this is for that crap. Okay. And so um, question number eight, what three words best describes this story is characters? I'm going to say uh, love, hope, and acceptance. And once again, this goes back to John 3, 17. For God did not come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Amen. I love this theme because you have so many different topics. You cover so many. Uh, one of the topics that I wanted to bring to attention, I think that would provoke a person to um, wanting to read more and see God more. Um, it's a heavy topic, but quite interesting. It will, it, it will provoke me to want to know more about what's in this book. And it's on page number one, after all the introductions, the forewords, is why would a loving God send people to hell? Is Jesus the only way? And I was also honored to write William's forward. God laid his heart for me to write it, and I'm, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But anyhow, that's one chapter that um, this book, that will be like, oh man, I want to know what's more going on. So that, the last question is, William, is, is there anything we haven't covered here that you feel is important for people to know about your book? You got 55 seconds. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, don't be afraid of the fact that I'm saying it's theology. Um, it is written for the normal person. It has uh, stories. It has, uh, uh, it has, um, Testimony. It has, um, well, like during uh, COVID, um, and I, my dad will actually want me to throw this out of the book because she's like, it sounds like you lost input from your own book. And I'm like, I did. And I said, but I think it's important for people to know that because mental health is a topic. And when COVID hit, um, it was it was a dark time for me. So, um, yeah, so I cover all of that here in this book. Amen. Well, thank you so much, William. That was so, um, I, I, if, if you didn't get it, I got it. The spill of his compassion of wanting to reach the people that needs to be reached. That's what this book does. New light on old truths. Reaching people that God have touched the heart 
to reach. And when, where can they get this book? You can get it on um, Amazon. It's available in hardback, paperback, and Kindle. Uh, you can get it on Barnes and Nobles, uh, or hardback, paperback, or Nook. Uh, you can get it on bestsellerpress.com. And how, if they wanted to get a hold of you, how would they be able to get a hold of you? My email address is William at thewilliamhenley.com. You can also reach out to me on uh, Instagram at thewilliamhenley. Um, and I'm on Facebook, but my Facebook is for friends and family. Uh, if I don't know you, I will reject you. But I, if you reach out to me on Instagram, it's public. Well, there you have it, folks. William did mention in one of his testimonies not to, not to go away from William's book. Um, about abortion. I wrote a book, Abortion Was My Birth Control, and it's about um, forgiving yourself. It's about coming out of bondage. It's for men and women. So um, if you want that book, you end of the segment, you can get that information. But in the meantime, go get William Edward Henley II book. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to reaffirm your relationship with God, I want you to say this prayer, this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart, and I make you my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you said that simple prayer with me, our nonprofit, I Am Building Corporation, we have been, been, been blessed to send free Bibles. Yes, I said free Bibles. Just go at the end of this segment, contact us with the information, and we'll be blessed to send you a free Bible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You, this video, this episode will be aired on our new local station, Roku station, Walking in the Supernatural. Um, anytime on demand, you can watch it any, as many times as you want. Also on the Now Network, um, I'm thinking not this, not next Monday, but the following Monday, um, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Hallelujah. And we have some other things in the works. And you also can go to the YouTube channel and watch it. Praise God. Wasn't this a good interview? Yes. William, you did a yes. great job. And I wanted to um, say about the forward that God woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning to write this forward um, for William. And it re really what it was, the forward says is that God um, told me that William was a man after his own heart. And that is in the forward when you read the book. Pretty much every word that I spoke because God sent William to me and he didn't even know that as he was talking about tithe, me and my husband at that time was robbing the Lord. And he didn't even know that as he was talking about tithing, he was convicting my heart, something serious. The Lord has sent him to convict my heart as God spoke through him. And I tell you, by the time I got done, when I left William, I called my husband. We rep we, we repented. It's going on five years and we have no regrets. And I will be forever grateful to William for obeying God. And that is in an example as part about tithing. So if you have not found a Bible-based church, find your church that speaks, preaches the unwavering of God. Get in a community. Obey God. Tie. Do all the things that you're supposed to do to get in alignment with the word of God. This is just tip of the iceberg introducing you to our supernatural Jesus Christ. And until then, walking in the supernatural with Pastor Evelyn Brooks, and we cannot wait to see you on our next episode. Bye-bye.